Hi folks and welcome to this presentation. It's really amazing to have you guys on board in this live session and I'm looking forward to sharing some amazing statistics in terms of what's happening in the MLM industry uh, globally and also in the emerging areas and hopefully give you reasons to get into the industry if you're not already in, into it and give you light a real fire under you in terms of what is possible within the space. Now I'm going to start off with the simplest most basic issue. A, the MLM business is based on providing individuals with an extremely simple, inexpensive business opportunity. So it's all about the business opportunity. It's all about them being able to make money by leveraging the, the, the sweat equity that they have rather than their financial um, contribution. So on average, a person would come along and for an extremely small amount of money would buy into an existing infrastructure. So the company sets up the entire infrastructure. They are housing the stock and, and warehousing the stock. They're doing the fulfillment. They're doing the accounting. They're doing the billing and taking the payments. They've got the HR. They've got the overhead of the staff. So the company has the entire infrastructure. And for a tiny amount of money, an individual can hook into that, that system. The company then will share a huge chunk of their turnover with that person. So that could be up to 60%. So you invest a tiny amount of money, you have access and you can leverage the infrastructure, the entire infrastructure of the company, and then you get to share 60%, not of the profits, but of the turnover. So you've got zero risk, you've got all of the systems that you would have if you had started your own massive business, and then the return you get is a 60% share of profits without any risk attached to it. So it's no wonder people are flooding to this, this industry. It's no wonder people are coming and saying, listen, we really need to be part of this. So if you have a look at it, in Europe, the average agent, the average IBO, we call them IBOs or independent business owner, <clears throat> the average agent is doing around $2,400 per year in sales. So that's on average. Obviously, there's some people doing less, some people more, but on average, that's what's happening. In South America, it's $2,050 per year. In North America, it's $1,800 per year. In Asia, it's around $1,300 per year. And in Africa, it's $520 per, per year. Now, I just want to point out that in Africa, which is an emerging market, we are seeing a trend where the average spend is increasing consistently year on year. Now, if you have a look in terms of the average sales by company, this is each taking the average companies and what are the sales. In Europe, on average, the companies are doing around $73 million a year. So that's a, a substantial turnover for an average company. Um, in South America, that's $61 million. In North America, $55 million. In Asia, $39 million. And in Africa, $15 million. Now, even when you're looking at an emerging market like Africa, $15 million company, that is not bad. If you've got a $15 million company, you've actually got a fairly substantial company. So let's have a look at the average company. <clears throat> average company is around 30,000 agents. So these are 30,000 active people who are actively buying, selling, or consuming the products. If you take the average across the board, it's about $1,900 average annual sales, including retail um, sales. So it's the sales at retail level. What happens there is that the company with 30,000 agents is doing around $57 million. Now we've got companies like that who are attached to, to our business. And so we've seen this happen and we see this happen in incredibly short order. Companies can get up to this turnover within uh, 12 to 18 months. And then of course, what is bringing all of these people on board is the fact that $29 million a year is being spent in terms of uh, um, salaries or commissions, let's call it. Now, if you think about it, how many companies do you know who can start and within 24 months be doing $57 million and be paying out commissions of $29 million? I mean, that is just extremely rare. So if you're thinking about getting into the MLM space, this is a serious place to be. And you should take this extremely seriously because there's really a huge amount of money to be made. But what's even more important is you can help a massive number of people, 30,000 people in this case, to put a roof over their head and food on their table. Let's have a look at what is actually happening globally in terms of distributors. In 
2011, there were 85 million people in the MLM industry. By 2015, that had grown to 105 million people. And by 2020, it had grown to 120 million people. And this is record setting stuff. It's just consistently growing year on year. And I want to point out that 2020 was a horrendous year. We had COVID. COVID absolutely decimated some industries. Uh, I mean, it crippled some, some industries completely. And yet in the MLM space, we grew from 118 million people to 120 million people. So that's pretty epic. So last year, there were 15 million full-time people involved. These are guys that do nothing else. They only um, do MLM. There were 44 million people who were part-time involved. These are people who maybe want to pay for a holiday or put their kids through school and need some extra cash for that or buy themselves a fancy car. And there were 60,000 people who were consuming the products. Now, a lot of people join the industry, become RBOs simply to consume the products at a, a slight discount. And so there were 60 million people who did that. Now, that excludes the customers because you can triple that number if you include customers in, in, the, in the overall picture. Now, we talked about average companies, but let's look at what the top company is doing. Company like Avon last year did 11.3 billion US dollars. 11.3 billion dollars. They've got 6.5 million agents worldwide. Now that is a serious business. They're in the top 40 in the world. Um, Amway got 3 million distributors, did 10.9 billion dollars. Companies like Nutria, uh, Nutra Cosmetico, which is a Brazilian company, have got 1.4 million people and they did 3 billion dollars in turnover. Forvac sells vacuum cleaners. They've got 600,000 agents. They did $3 billion in turnover. Tupperware sell plastic containers, for heaven's sakes. You can buy plastic containers at every retail store. Obviously, they sell really nice plastic containers. They're beautiful plastic containers, and everybody wants them. As a result, they've got 2.6 million people as IBOs in their business, and they're doing $2.6 billion in turnover selling plastic containers. I mean, how awesome is that? And even the number 10 on the, on the list here, um, Belcorp, they're a company based out of Peru. They've got 938,000 agents and they did $1.6 billion in turnover. Now compare that to what I talked about earlier on, which is a small team of 38,000, 30,000 people. In, in perspective, in the greater scheme of things, a 30,000 person team is minuscule compared to what the big companies are doing and highly achievable for anybody who's getting into the space. So if you talk about global sales versus commissions, globally there was $118 billion spent or, or uh, retail sales generated in the industry last year. $102 billion were paid out in commissions. Now that's $30 billion in retail profits and $72 billion in upline commissions. So that's a substantial amount of money and of course the industry currently is paying around $3.4 million every hour. I and mean, that's just incredible. When you think of that in terms of statistics, there's very few industries that are having that big an impact in terms of how much money is going to the people involved in actually doing the sales, the frontline cutting edge people. The last 10 years, in actual fact, over $1.749 trillion was generated in sales and almost, a, well, just over a billion, a, a trillion dollars was paid out in commissions. I mean, that is just staggering, staggering statistics, you know. So when people say things like, oh, this is a pyramid scheme or this is, you know, this should be illegal, it's not true at all. The bottom line is there are massive companies, highly ethical companies, helping put food on the table and a roof over their heads of huge numbers of people globally. As I said, Small investment, tiny investment, you get access to the entire infrastructure of the company and the company splits a massive part of the, of the profits with you. So in terms of joining the network, it is highly ethical. In terms of owning a network marketing company, well, it's an amazing way to help a lot of people and also it's a license to print money. So let's have a look at about the MLM sales by region. So there's, you know, it's breaking down into regions. So Asia, you can see, had $83 billion in sales uh, last year. Europe had $36 billion in sales. North America was $34 billion of, in sales. South America, $25 billion. And Africa was $1.7 billion. 
Now, you can see here immediately that the opportunity, the main growth spots would be in South America and Africa and the other emerging markets around the world. That is where the opportunities really reside. But there are companies who are starting right now in Europe, starting right now in North America, and starting right now in Asia, who are making massive inroads and are obviously generating huge revenues. If you look at the market share, 18% of all sales happen in the US and 18% happen in China. Now, that shouldn't surprise you because at the end of the day, the US and China are the biggest economies in the world, and that's where the money is. But Korea, 9% of all MLM sales happened in a country like Korea. Now, Korea is not massive. Korea is not a particularly rich country. So here you've got 9% of all MLM sales happening in a country like Korea. Germany, 9%, again, not a huge country, yet 9% of the sales are happening there. So stuff is happening in Europe. 6% in Japan. 3% in Brazil. Now, Brazil is an emerging, emerging market, and yet 3% of all sales globally, all MLM sales, are happening in, in somewhere like Brazil. So again, huge op opportunity there. Same with Mexico. Same with France. France is a growing and exploding market. It's not what we call an emerging market, but certainly is growing. And of course, Malaysia, 3%. Taiwan, 2%. Now, Taiwan is a tiny little country. Um, the rest of all of the rest of the countries in the world make up 21% of the, um, the balance of the growth. And if we talk about it in terms of, of actual sales, Taiwan, 3.68 billion. If we go down a bit further, somewhere like Brazil, $9.76 billion. Japan, $15 billion. There's Germany. And I mean, look at Germany, $17 billion. So there's a great place to open and, and run an MLM business. Korea is 17 billion, China's 23 billion, and of course, the big daddy, 35 billion in the US. Um, huge, huge market there, huge market. And people understand multi-level marketing. They're invested in MLM, MLM there. It's a really great place to run an MLM business. But here's the opportunity. Africa grew with 64%, from 1.1 billion to 1.7 billion. Now understand that if you want to make real money, it's always a good idea to be in emerging markets and in markets that have got real upside potential in terms of growth. Because if you can ride that growth wave, you can generate huge amounts of money. Now, <clears throat> Africa's got a already showing a big growth curve. Um, we specialize in the African market, so there's really opportunity for us to help you penetrate that market. In terms of Asia, there's a 37% growth there, also emerging markets. Europe, 18% growth from 31 to 36. South America grew from 21 to 27 um, billion. Now, I just want to point out that 3% doesn't sound a lot. But in South America, they got $7 billion additional turnover last year. So that $7 billion is a huge chunk of change. If you were part of that growth, you would have actually experienced some of that money in terms of, of the, the growth. And then globally, the industry has grown over the last 10 years has grown by 27%. So that is also substantial in terms of the, 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 the results of the growth of, of MLM worldwide. Okay, next, let's talk about product categories. Because if you, when you are thinking of getting into MLM, or if you're already in it, it's very important to know what the major categories in are, what, what is really where the, the the income is being generated and the sales are being generated. Well, the first thing is in the wellness industry. It's the number one place. People are extremely health conscious nowadays. And if you've got a really high, good, high quality product and you can train your people well, then the wellness industry is an incredibly good place to be. If you can ex explore that avenue, 34% of all sales in MLM in the world are happening in the wellness industry. The second biggest is the cosmetics industry. Now, cosmetics is an, a wonderful place to be. A, you have to have, a, obviously, a high-quality product. But the beauty is if you can train your people to sit down with somebody and show them why the product is good and what is, what is making it good and why they should buy it, then the uptake is great. And the second thing in terms of the wellness and the cosmetics industry is your margins are excellent. So you can make really good money in terms of those particular verticals. Um, household durables, another space, which is 11% which is of all sales. And those are things like Rainbow, Kirby, 4 vac vacuum cleaners, um, 
steamers, cookers, all sorts of things are happening in those that space. And again, good margins and an excellent space to be in. Clothing a little bit more difficult because you've either got to be buying the clothing really cheaply or you've got to have some big brands behind you. And so clothing is a way to, to, to generate good sales, but it's a, a little tougher. The financial services, you know, they consist about 4% of the sales happening worldwide in the financial services and that's sort of legal services, insurance, etc. So there is definitely space in there. And we, we've been wondering why we're not getting more clients in that space because it's an incredible place to, to um, generate uh, um, turnover. But again, you know, it's, it's only 4% of what's happening globally is happening in that space. Home care, 3%. Utilities and that things like electricity, internet, those kind of things, that's down at 3%. And then all other products make up about 6% of total sales globally. So again, you can see that you're better off up on the left-hand side where you're doing things like wellness, cosmetics and household rather than on the right-hand side where you're doing things like home care and utilities. But again, 3% of $181 billion, $181 billion is still a chunk of change. That's a huge um, market. You know, even though it's only 3%, it's still a massive market. Now, if you have a look at the established markets, 62% um, of all sales in 2010 was happening in the established markets and 33 in the emerging markets. Now, as time has gone uh, along, that ratio has changed. And at the moment, about 43% of all sales is happening in the emerging markets and 56.7% is happening in the established markets. And the thing is that if you have a look at the emerging markets versus the established markets, well, much more of the world is emerging in the space than is established. So you've got North America, Europe, Australia, Japan, uh, New Zealand are considered as your established markets. But the rest of the world there is emerging markets. That's where the major growth is going to take place. Companies are getting into that space. If you're an existing company, you're getting into that space. There's, the opportunity for growth is incredible. If you're a new company and you're getting into this, the, the, the MLM business, then it's absolutely well worthwhile looking at the emerging markets and seeing if you can't penetrate those markets because the opportunity is, is there. It's waiting for somebody to, to tap into and make it happen. Couple of things to bear in mind, the split between um, genders, 74% of everybody involved in this industry is female and 26% is male. So if you've got a product that you're pitching, it's obvious, makes sense that you would want to have something that is more female oriented than male oriented because that provides you with a very nice um, and, and, and substantial workforce to go out and make it happen for you. And if you take that across the regions in Asia, it's a 68, 32% split. In Europe, it's an 83, 17% split. So you can see in Europe, it's much more female heavy. In North America, it's a 74, 26% split. And in South America, it's 86 and 14. So you can see in South America, it's extremely heavily um, geared towards ladies. And again, if you're launching into those markets, that is something to just keep in mind. Another thing is the top 20% of the earners around the world are either um, ladies or are couples. So our experience is that the, the couples are super powerful. If you can get a man and woman as a couple involved in the business, it's an incredibly powerful way to drive your, your top leadership. But of course, the ladies are making huge inroads in terms of this, and they are by far the leading earners in our industry. So the industry has, over the last 10 years, has experienced the 3.7% compound annual growth. There's very few industries that can say anything close to that. So despite COVID, despite the tough economic conditions, it's one of the few industries that in, 2000, in, in 2020 experienced substantial growth and has been growing consistently over the last 10 years. The distributed numbers this last year were record highs. And so it's notable that when times are good, MLM is an excellent business opportunity. It's an excellent route to market. But when times are bad, MLM is totally amazing because either the people have got the money to buy the products, in which case turnover is great, or the people are looking for opportunity and jobs and way to you know, earn a living, in which case you have an explosion of new members in, in the networks. So MLM is geared for growth. They say that over the next 
five years, there's going to be a trillion dollars additional sales and 400 billion in additional commissions. I mean, that's just amazing. Just to think, be part of an industry where you can tap into a trillion dollar growth is just incredible to think about. So the question I have is, are you part of this industry? If you are part of this industry, we'd love to talk to you and we'd love to share our ideas, etc., with you. If you're not part of the industry, you really need to consider MLM as a route to market. We have a website called MLM for CEOs. Um, it's a free resort resource. It costs you nothing. So you can come along to MLM for CEOs. Here you will find pod, uh, blog posts about just about anything to do with the industry. We'd love to see you there. Um, we have also webinars. This one, this live stream that we're doing with you today will become part of that uh, webinars and you'll be able to go in here and you'll be able to uh, see those those uh, uh, webinars and actually replay them at your to your heart's content. We also interview some of the top people around the world. Um, so we've got a lot of podcasts where we're interviewing people, guys like Bob Parker for, from Forever Living and uh, Alan Bell, who was heading up, he was the CEO for um, Body Shop Direct, um, Jay Leisner, who's an expert in compensation plans, etc. This lady here, um, Gail, Reynolds did somewhere close to seven million pounds in commissions. She's just an agent, but she did seven million pounds in commissions from Avon last year. So very interesting place to come and just have a chat with or, or listen to what people are saying about the industry, etc. If you are on our Facebook page, please subscribe, like. If you see us on, on YouTube, um, again, please subscribe to our channel, like it, because we're desperately wanting to get the message out. Share the MLM experiences, live stream on those channels so that people get to hear about MLM, understand what is possible, and go out there and make an absolute fortune for themselves and their networks. Okay, that's it for me. I'd like to thank you very much for spending this time. Um, I hope that you got something of, of great value out of this presentation and that, uh, that you go out there start yourself an MLM business or take your MLM business to the next level and really go out, help a lot of people and make an absolute killing in your personal lives. Thanks.